So today we're going to have a look at how we read the information in from external files. As we do this task, we're also going to go look at functions, parameter passing, etc. My intention is to do this two ways. First of all, using an array of records and then doing parallel arrays. However, that might make it run on for a wee bit, and so it might be a part two. Okay, so let's get started then. Right, this is the file I've created. You'll notice it's not particularly big. It's only four lines in length. It consists of two bits of information, a forename and a number. Let's call it score. So what we've got here is a forename and score. And we're going to read that in on this file here. Okay, and then we're just going to display it up on the screen. Something nice and simple. So make sure, first of all, that the file is saved in the same location that you're going to save your work. Okay, so I'm saving mine in here. So uh, I'm just going to call it external file. Okay, so hopefully it's saved in exactly the same, well, not hopefully, it is saved in exactly the same place. And um, we're just going to get started in this. So. So the first thing we do, I'm just going to do a wee def main and a wee call to main and that's to make sure whatever we're working with is done local. So it's the local parameters that we are working with. So first thing I want to do is to uh, read in an external file. So we're going to need an array to do that. We know they've got four values in this array. Um, so we could create that array. So let's go ahead and get this done now. So we're going to be using data classes. Okay. So when we're using the data class, we first of all have to import it in and, oh, Interesting. Let's do that again. So we're going to call this uh, score. Uh, class score. And it's going to have a name as a string. And it's going to have, ooh, score.score. .score. That's going to get confused if I have that. So uh, what about we do player score? And the score is going to be an integer. Okay. So we've set it up uh, nice and simply at the start. So we've got this up here at the top. You'll notice that this is in the global um, space. And that's because I want to be able to access this and maybe do things with it. You don't have to. To be perfectly honest, if you, you create this, you put it inside the bit. I just always tend to put it up here at the top of the program um, when we're creating it. So let's go ahead then. Set up an array. So uh, we'll call it high scores. High scores equals an array. And it's an array of type player score. Okay. And uh, type player score. And it consists of a string and a number. Just like that. And then we do for x in range. And there's only four. So let's just keep it with four. There's no point making it 10 or 20. I mean, obviously, high school tables tend to have more than that. But uh, we can simply run with that just now. So you'll notice I keep saving and running. Uh, force of habit. What I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm not making a typo on each line. Although the Python interpreter will tell me if I've made a sort of basic syntax error, uh, I'm regularly doing things like, for example, you know, getting the data class data wrong the wrong way or forgetting to put things inside the bracket and all sorts of other things that can potentially cause you problems. So all we're doing is just uh, doing that as we go through doing it. All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to read data. So high scores is going to equal read file and I'm going to pass in high scores so that we can store it in there. Okay. So def, 
Big fail. High scores. And what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to open the file. So we need an object name, so I just tend to call it CSV file, because that way I remember it is. And then it's open, and then it's the name of the external file. So you want to just make sure you've got that done. So this is called example.csv. So open example.csv, comma, and I want to open it for a read operation. Okay. Good idea. Once you've opened it, go ahead and put in the code to close it. That way you won't forget. Okay. Now, most common mistake is it's not in the same location. So if I just hit run, what will happen is it'll check it. No errors, therefore it must have found the file. But it's not read anything in the file. That's because we haven't typed anything for it. So let's go ahead and get this done. Okay. So um, for index in range 4. Okay, we are going to go with, let's just read the line in. So a couple of ways we can do that. We can do it one at a time or we can kind of group it all together. Um, I prefer having it all grouped together in one big line, but I know a lot of people struggle with it. So what I'll do is I'll put it down just now so you can see what it looks like. So line equals, okay, and I want to CSV file read line. Right now what that'll do is that'll store this in line. Now I'm just going to I'll break it down one step at a time and then I'll show you one at the end but it's all come together. Okay. Then what I want to do is I need to remove the, the control line at the end of it. Okay, so line equals line dot strip. That'll move the control line at the end of it. And now what I want to do is I want to split it. And I'm going to split it amongst with the comma, CSV, comma, set weight value. So that is going to give me a var two variables, A and B. Okay. And all I'm going to do is put in line.split like that. Okay. So now we have the values of A and B. And if I just do print A, B, we'll see... When we run it, it should just display those names and put them up on the screen. Okay, so that's all those that does. But it is possible to do this in an awful lot less space, more efficiently. What we do is we just put the AB up at the top, then we add on dot strip, we add on dot split. Okay, and now what we've got is we have got this line of code here, which says, read the line, strip the control end from the end, split it in the comma, and store those information in the two temporary variables A and B. Now, if you're wondering why we're using two temporary variables, it's simply so that it's easier for us to then cast it to the right data type. So if I put in high scores, index dot name equals A, okay, and high scores, index dot score equals the N of B, okay. Now what's happened there is it's going to cast those two to the right type. We come down to the bottom, bring this up a wee bit, and we're simply going to return high scores. Okay, now if I go down here and print high scores, oops, my bad, extra S in there, then we should just get this information printed out and we'll see it as an array of records. So here we are. So 
we have this array. How do you know it's array? It's got square brackets around it. And each element of the, of the array consists as the following. Okay. Now, I'm looking at that and I'm noticing there's something wrong straight away. You see it? Score is zero for them all. And if I look up here, I've got a typo. And that's why it's important all the time just to constantly check and make sure that when you're doing these things, you're testing it as you go along. Because if you then try to do like a fine max and you had the wrong data in it, then it's old garbage in, garbage out. You're just going to be sitting there scratching your head wondering why the answer you get is constantly zero. Okay, so fix the typo and that's it. And that's as simple as it is for reading information in from an external file. Okay, this open using an array of records to store that information so that we can then uh, go through it. And now we can use this high score array for anything else we want to do with it. Okay, so in the next video, whenever we look at how to do the same thing, except this time we're going to modify the program to work with parallel arrays.